Anyway, we're, we're going sideways. So um, to get from here to from zero to eighty percent is so easy compared to these percentage points up here. As soon as course, you get yeah, up to 80, yes. 90 percent, the, the, you have diminishing return in your effort. I keep going down to this. Uh, no, yeah. So then this all comes back to attitude. So the final cog in consistency is your mental attitude toward your consistency. Yes. So I had, I had a client the other week and we came up with this idea about self-diagnosis. So after the shot, we stay in position and... <clears throat> so you want to... So, I can, so if I stay in position I can very clearly see my cue moved out to the side. So then it's obvious why I missed the shot. So sometimes, sometimes you know why you missed. I mean, there's two choices, queuing or aiming, isn't it? Queuing, aiming. That's your two choices for missing a ball, it's your two options. Sometimes, you can guess. You, know, you need to guess sometimes. Sometimes you won't be able to answer, why did I miss that? Was it queuing or aiming? Don't really know. The cue felt okay. Oh, I'm not really sure if I, if I stayed still. Can't really tell if it was my aiming or my queuing. But I think maybe my bridge hand wasn't solid enough. So you can guess sometimes. Other times you just haven't got a clue. You have no idea whatsoever why you missed the ball. And you can't work it out also. I think accepting this is so important. If, if, I, if, a player, if I work with a player and if they're in this zone here, for 50% of the time I'm delighted. And if they're up here at 10% of the time when they know exactly why they missed, I'm happy with that. But most players just, I think, assume they should know 100% of the time exactly why they missed. But they're a tiny variable. Sometimes it's tough to work it out. Okay. Uh, so um, what I'm saying is accepting that sometimes you won't have a clue why you miss or why you're playing bad, it's okay to not have a clue. Yeah, but Nothing you shouldn't stay that. very long on that. Well, sometimes you've... What, what should be a way to, to step up. This, this is an invitation into a downward spiral for players. Okay. Because if they resist this, they say, I should know why I'm missing. That doesn't help. It locks you in a despair. Okay. Doesn't it? Because if you're saying, I shouldn't be angry, but I'm angry, it doesn't help, it just makes it worse. What you resist persists, gets even worse, gets stronger. Yes. As, okay. you, as you push against something that isn't going to disappear, it gets stronger, it pushes back more. So accepting this is so important. Accepting that you don't know and that it's okay. And then this comes on to what Ray Reardon said to me. Stephen Henry said this in his book as well. It's okay to just carry on. What do they say in the, on the English t-shirts? Keep calm and carry on. Carry on, yeah. It is okay to carry on with your routine, your method, your discipline, post-shot routine, your way of playing snooker, and to not play well. It's not an easy game. I mean, players, I think, have false expectations based on what the guys on TV do. They're so damn good. But in some ways it's unfair and unrealistic to watch those guys play. Because we get, we get false expectations absorbed into our mind. Like blacks, for example. Players get wound up when they miss a black. Oh, I shouldn't miss a black. They never miss a black on TV. But <laughs> I've been playing 20 years, solidly. 
all day long. So this, so when I say it's okay to carry on playing, what players tend to do is if, if, they're, if they're in one of these areas here, you know, they tend to start doing stuff like, I had, I had a pro in here once actually who said, he said, on one day I had four different stances and about six different cue actions. Because I missed a long blue, I changed my stance. I missed a black, I changed my cue action. Okay. I messed the safety shot up, so I had another cue action. Plan C, cue action. Snooker players get trapped into the, this mm -hmm. mindset of changing things all of the time, even at the professional level. So um, if, you, if you're down here in these down phases, it's okay not to change what you do. But just, just, just carry keep, on with your techniques. Just keep carrying on. That, and that's what Ray Reardon said and Stephen Hendry in his work. Just keep carrying on. When you're playing bad, don't get sucked into changing technique and <coughs> altering everything. And you already decided that in your pre shot routine, your post shot, your number of cue actions, you decided on that. It's okay to continue. Because sometimes you'll be playing well. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to do anything different when you're playing well, you just carry on. But it's easier said than done to ignore all of these <laughs> and, and just uh, And also the possibility happy. of, of it, this is a 50-50 chance here. Your drawing is a 50-50 chance. Yeah, well you're either above average or below or average, below average. You, in your performance. You don't spend much time exactly on the average line, do you? Yeah, the, the target, target should be you stay above the line as long as you can. Yeah, or, or I would actually think of it another way. When you're below the line, it's that you are, you don't know what, you don't know what you've done wrong. Or you do and you can't address it now. You know, uh, I... I'm 4-1 down against the player I should beat, and I'm, I'm losing because I'm angry that I'm better than him, and he took the first frame off me. Yeah. Okay, so I know that, okay, that's my self-diagnosis, that's why I'm losing, that's why I'm playing bad, because I'm angry, I can't get out of it. And just despite the fact that I've diagnosed, I, I don't have time to do it now in the match, so very often I'd be in a match and I'd, I'd know why I'm missing, okay, I missed that red in the corner. So my mind goes toward, how do I, what do I need to do to get better at that? Can I notice my cueing and I was nervous of hitting it too thin, so I hit it too thick. So how, how do I work that out? Okay, I'll go to practice and then, um, and then, so instead of practicing this one, which I miss that quite a lot. I'm going to move it to here. See if I can pop that. If I can do that, do this, and do this. If I miss that, go back again. You know, and gradually make it tougher until you can pot it from here. Which Steve Davis should have practiced in 1985 on that side of the table. So sometimes the self-diagnosis doesn't mean you'll instantly recover in the game. You need more time afterwards, and that's acceptable. But I think it's all about expectations management. As soon as, we, as soon as our expectation puts us into despair, our expectation that we should improve, that we should know our errors, that we should be able to recover instantly, as if we're John Higgins, or one of the top players who, if they're in a slight rut, they'll recover very quickly. He can do that because he's been playing his whole life all day long. Mm -hmm. And thinking about it, put his whole life thought into it. So I don't know if that makes sense.
I understand what you're trying to say. I think it's a little bit about humility as well. I think we've got to respect this game. I mean, this is not uh, like aviation. You have to respect safety rules. You, you can't just yeah. put a plane in the air with no servicing schedule. You know, in, in the same way. Um, I mean, even, even these days, there are still plane incidents, aren't there? Crashes. That's why you have the black box to diagnose what happened and then improve procedures. You know, improve, improve how they're built. Continuously. Continuously. Yeah, you don't stop. Continuously. This is 24 hours. Yeah, look at John Higgins. when So, four cue actions, every shot. He stays down, watches the ball. If Even now, when he's going four-time world champion, I, <coughs> I hit the top jaw. Why? Oh, I twitched the arm a little bit. I mean, every shot is a feedback loop. Every single shot. His match play is actually practice to improve his game. Okay. Underneath the importance of the match, isn't it? Every single shot he plays is feedback, learning, practice. Okay. The myths of eye preference, eye strength and eye dominance. This is one of my favourite subjects because it's mis-explained so often. 